Hello, everybody, and welcome to this next episode of DOD 45, Drawing Over Discussions, 45 Minutes with a Special Guest. I'm your host, Ty of Art by Ty, and I've really been looking forward to this discussion, both with excitement and a hint of trepidation. I got a little bit of a third wheel feeling going on. My guests have been friends for such a long time that obviously they have a rapport with each other, and I'm just slightly concerned I'll not be able to keep up. But I know once my pen hits the pad, it'll all be fine. Anyway, my guests today are Mr. Dids. This is me the whole interview. <laughs> aka brad and sean aka slug of atmosphere look at that dude i see that dude Am I on <laughs> sean can you see me hold on i gotta set the fucking mood can you, can you hear me uh, what are the rules tell me the rules while while we're uh no rules man I'm feeling a little bit like the opening act here to many of you who are watching or listening to this right now. So believe me, it's not lost on me that many of you are here just for dibs and slug. It's also not lost on me that this DOD 45 series was started as a way to expose my audience of appreciators and collectors to the people who for years have created the music that has inspired my artwork and my professional career as an artist. So in the words of Kwai Chang Kane's blind Shaolin master, patience. Young Grasshopper. Oh, that was douchey. Look, this is just the intro. There's plenty of time with Slug and Dibs in this episode. In fact, we actually uh, went in discussion for nearly four and a half hours. So yes, there will be plenty to hear and plenty to take in. I did have to edit out a couple of hours. A very funny, very interesting discussion. But what is presented here to you today is a good representation of the overall conversation. In truth... I guess on this episode, we're going to have to call it DOD 145. Now, usually during my introduction, I explain how and when I discovered my guests. I've been a fan of both these guys for such a long time that I don't think I could actually pinpoint exactly uh, when that moment was. But I can tell you, I vividly remember having a very, very, very enthralling experience with Atmosphere's album, God Loves Ugly. Been paying dues for a decade plus. Before that, I was just another face on the bus. And I've been an adamant advocate ever since. Not that they need me for validation as they've got a vast and ravenous following, but I'm in their corner. I used to produce this Things Going Down TV show called 3.2%. It was in Salt Lake City, Utah. In 2003, we were covering the Vans Warped Tour and I was granted access to film Atmosphere's performance. What's up, Salt Lake City? Over there, that was the and at that time, I was vaguely familiar with Atmosphere. I was just some young dude producing a TV show. I was pretty much a one-man production. I had a camera, a microphone, and a host, and we were given access to interview Atmosphere after the show. Backstage, Dibs came out for the interview, and we just went for it. He was gracious and probably pretty drunk. That interview was very hard for me to go back and watch because... I was so young and um, naive, I was just totally out of my element and had very little preparation for that interview. So it's really kind of embarrassing and difficult to go back and watch. There are some brief moments of funny in the segment, so I don't mind telling you to go check it out. But all you hip hop heads out there, just take it easy. I mean, it was 20 years ago. That was my real first exposure to atmosphere. So after about one season of that TV series, I started focusing on my art career. I was painting pop art under the moniker Weird Chief. I used to do these stencil pieces of slug and dibs. And years later, after Instagram came out, I started posting pictures of those old pieces. And somehow Mr. Dibs discovered them and started following that Weird Chief page. Uh, in fact, he and Rob Sonic are some of the first people in the hip hop world who started following my artwork. And I'm super grateful for that. Over the years, I would occasionally message Mr. Dibs and let him know about any events or stuff that was coming up. And he was always responsive and super rad about it. So when it came time to do this DOD 45 series, he was one of the first people that I contacted to join me and he was always down for it. So when I approached Slug about joining me for an episode, he caught wind that I was gonna be doing an episode with Mr. Dibs and he asked if he could just sit in on the Dibs episode. I checked with Dibs, Dibs was cool with it. And so here we are today, worked out perfectly. 
Now, once you're out from under your rock and you've settled in, I'm gonna come at you with Mr. Dibs. He's an established DJ, turntablist, and hip hop producer out of Cincinnati, founder of the 1200 Hobos Crew, and co-founder of the infamous Scribble Jam, which was one of America's largest hip hop festivals in the late 1990s and early 2000s, and it was a popping off spot for many of the artists that you actually listen to today. He's respected for his skills, and in fact, every hip hop artist or DJ that you follow, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they all follow Mr. Dibs. And there's a reason for that. The dude's a stud, and he's damn good at what he does. In fact, at your first chance, go check out his collab with Run the Jewels remix, Run the Dibs. It's straight fire. Emoji, 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 emoji. Dibs was also a touring DJ for LP, and for many years he was a touring DJ for Atmosphere, and it really is such an honor for me to have him and Slug on the show today. As I usually point out in my intros, I prefer to stay away from info that's readily available everywhere, or uh, rehash out discussions that can be heard on any other interviews and podcasts, and that definitely pertains to both of my guests today, and particularly to Mr. Dibs and his multiple brushes with death. Is it a brush with death if your heart actually stops? It doesn't matter. But Twice Dying is obviously an incredibly interesting story. We won't be getting into that much today because that's a story that is told in great detail on the Bastard Sermon podcast. If you'd like to hear more about that, I suggest checking that out because it's a crazy, crazy story. That episode also has some wild content that may be a little much for the feeble, so fair one. Anyway... It's a long-winded build-up, but I couldn't just jump right into this. I had to give some backstory. So let's just go ahead and welcome our guests. Thank you guys for joining me today. I I set the timer for 45 minutes. I plan to finish a drawing. Hey, are you sure you can finish a pony corn in 45 minutes? Because that is not an easy answer. No, I'm not. It's a four-minute sketch, bro, at the most. You're going to have to give the pony corn like extra feet. Well, here's the thing. I usually draw one drawing. I'm trying, I'm going to draw two right here on this page. I'm going to split it in half, tear it in half so I can send you each your own version of it. The uh, goal is to do 45 minutes. If you're going to rip this in half, then uh, make sure that I get the bigger half. Pretty nice. <laughs> Before we start the 45 minutes, let me check in with you guys. How are you, how are you guys doing? I've never seen time move so slow while in, 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 in while simultaneously getting so little done like this is the most unproductive year that i've had in a long time and i fucking love it like i'm fucking chilling don't call me for nothing but you know spent a lot of time with my family do your family hate you yet <laughs> nah well I, is it bad when the toddler's like i hate you it's like where did you even learn this like this is not teletubby shit what do you I'm good, man. Uh, I've been running the distance learning pod for a first grader and a fifth grader. And by running, I mean, like, you know, I like bark orders at them and tell them to do pushups and shit. It's a, but it's, it's been a long year, man, but it's been, it's been fruitful. Uh, I have not, I have never been able to spend this much time with, with my children before. And, and uh, it's, it's been very, um, it's been very good for all of us. We've learned a lot about each other. I've learned a lot about myself trying to get my my tolerance game up my my that sounds like a drinking thing i'm trying to get my patience up i'm trying to get my tolerance for bullshit levels higher you know what i'm saying and i think that's just that's good for me uh to not get so quickly stressed out to not immediately reach for the the panic button when when poo is on the fan <laughs> well didn't you i mean didn't you used to talk i mean you used to tour with brad so uh, wouldn't you be used to that <laughs> You got a point. Well, it's a really valid point. Well, okay, you're just going straight there. It's zero to sixty and two point eight. It's a different thing. Touring is a different thing. It's like we allow adults allow each other to act like fucking ego maniacal, spoiled baby, narcissistic. You know, it's just hard to accept that shit from a kid. Like, how did you learn this already? How did you already learn that? I learned it by watching you, Dad. <laughs> How about you, Brad? How you been uh, locked up? Are you good with isolation? Yeah, I love it. Can't go to jail when you're in isolation. Take the wife to work, eat dinner, play with toys, and work on music. That's it the whole time. You take it over to over being out on the road. I've been over being out on the road. Yeah, you know when you once you when you're not doing it like constantly, then you have a big break. 
the idea is not as attractive because you remember everything you did before. There's always the looming threat that you'll go on that tour again and be that dude. No matter what position you're in at the moment, you never know. All right. Uh, you know what? Here's what I'll do. I'm going to start the timer and start drawing your, your guys' picture. Uh, Brad asked for a turkey vulture, and Sean asked for a pony corn. A pony corn is the turkey vulture's only natural predator. Did you get that off of Wikipedia? What does that mean? Of course. Google or Wikipedia. Where else is there anywhere else to get information? Like a book? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Is that a timer? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What is that? I like to go old school. And it makes and the buzzer sound on it too. It like rattles my brain. So I like to throw out Sophie's choices. So you guys, they're not always brilliant or 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 fantastic, but sometimes they're fun. Uh, we're gonna put um, Brad on blast. So it's gonna be um, Lamb of God or God Loves Ugly. God loves ugly. Get out of here. Nah, nah, nah. Nothing. You're only saying that because I'm here. No, nothing against Lamp. No, I toured that record. I'm going with the record I toured on. <laughs> That's all there is to it. That's an easy one. God loves ugly. There's videos, television appearances. I didn't do any of that with Lamb of God. I'm going with God loves ugly. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will show you all you need to know. You must. Oh, no, but I, I didn't say that you had to do it again right now. <laughs> I know all the words too, you know. Prince or Prince Paul? Prince. Black Flag or Black Sabbath? Black Sabbath. I have my reasons for that one, but it, it's pretty simple. Um, we used that on the God Loves Ugly Tour, too. We used War Pigs, so you're making that, you know, we used it. When was the last time you got on stage together? What was the question? Oh, I was just wondering when, when what actually was the last time that you guys were on, on stage together, performing On together. stage together, performing together. Hoo-ha! <laughs> Last time we were on stage together, not performing would have been the twentieth. That was even six years ago, almost. That was that was two thousand fifteen, right? Think, yeah, yeah. But I I think you're probably right. And uh, a long time, two thousand four, four five ish, two thousand five. Did you you came to Minneapolis for the ten year in two thousand? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did the ten year. You guys stay in touch though, yeah. Unfortunately, constantly. Yeah. Did you say unfortunately? Yeah. Wake up calls, reminders, uh, the good night call every day since we have. He talks to me through a baby monitor. It's the same as when we're on tour. Like I, sometimes I open the mirror to get the toothpaste and I hear him. You know, it's just like, it's just ever present. It's just a voice. It's one of the voices inside of my head. It's the only fucking voice inside of my head. I heard, Sean, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard you did an impersonation of me on RA's podcast. It, well, it, it wasn't like, hey, I got a dope dibs impersonation. You want to hear it? It was more like in, in, in the process of telling like an anecdote or a story. Right. I spoke. I, I, I quoted you. And so I did my voice like this or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, here, watch this. I'm doing impersonations. Here's Jay-Z. Here's Mr. Dibbs. You know, it was more like, uh, ah, I can't remember what we were talking about. So you guys were talking about the mind story, the back and forth we did. Oh yeah. We were yeah. talking about the IG thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, was, he hit me. I was like, when would you stop it or something? You know, like, my, my version of your voice is just like, what do you want to do now? It's like, you it's one part like caveman. And then like one part, just like, you know, <laughs> intrigue. You know, it's 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 sensual though. I I show your 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 vulnerable side. My vulnerable side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I make sure I make sure that that shines too. Anytime that I do your voice in the gravel throat impersonation. Here's 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 the thing. We should we should we gotta end it. How should we end it? You know, it's it's like I definitely there's a vulnerability inside of my version of of dibs. Woo. But that's because I know you. I, I I see. I know that vulnerability. It's there and. So I, I can't help it. Could you tell me about the, the, the circuit bent toys? It's a thing invented by a guy named Reed Gazala. And um, a friend of mine from here named Eric was already doing it. And uh, it's, there's a really long story, but I hit Eric up. He came to the house, showed me some basics. And then I read Reed Gazala's book. And then basically the book and Eric. And I learned it from there. You're spending a lot of time doing those? Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun. It seems like you're having a good time with them. You don't want to know how much fun it really is when you're blowing up toys in the garage that you spent money on occasionally. It's fun. 
where do you source those toys from? Like, where do you, where, like, what, what's the, what's like the main place where you, where you source the majority of your toys? Are you getting them in the Goodwills? Are you getting them online? You're at Etsy. Where are you fucking with this? You get them at, you get them at thrift stores. If there's something in particular you want, you can get it online. But here's the thing about thrift stores. The, the people they hire are all rappers and producers. So you walk through there long enough and some dude sees you when they notice the grown man in the toy section every day for a week, they'll come over there and stare at you. And then someone will be like, oh, you know who that is? And then they'll be like, so uh, you make music with these toys? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, tell you what, I'll set aside 20 toys on the top shelf for you if you make a toy for my producer. <laughs> and so you make them a toy and you get 50 or 60 in return until your back storage room looks like a Toys R Us. If I got 100 toys from a thrift store, I paid for three. And I use pay very loosely like you're the cashier sean so you're like 50 cents you know it's a thrift store they get it all free anyway you know and the only rule is if there's a little kid holding a toy you you have to leave the kid with the toy other than that stay out of my toy aisle if you're an adult you don't belong there it's like record shopping yes it stay is. out of my record store stay out of my train yard stay out of my toy aisle <laughs> you have a, a a record shop like when you're out touring um is there a shop that you that's a must stop shop that you would like to give props to Should, yeah no, there are there's there's uh there's always like a top five and it it, it evolves you know but I, I always have a top five, five favorite shops i haven't been on tour for a while so these five have been holding down their spot for a while if i had to name them i'd say there's a there's a record store in um pomona called glass house uh and there's a spot up in San Jose called Needle to the Groove. In Denver, I like a spot called Recollect. Friends of Sound in, in uh, San Antonio. Oh, there's a spot out in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I always forget what it's called. Elm City Sound. That's the one. Yep. In, uh, in, in New Haven. That place is dope, too. But, it, but it'll change. You know what I'm saying? Then, they, then I'll be like, oh, Jungle Records in Los Angeles. or You know what I mean? Like, it's because because it always the, the records change like nobody gets to be the best forever it's like anything you know what i'm saying nobody gets to be the best shot forever no yeah but my taste is stupid so asking me my five favorites really doesn't mean jack shit for the most part you know what i mean it's just like these are the places that i enjoy hanging out for the shopping the aesthetics the conversations that go down the people that run it you know what i mean it's like it's like like i'm i don't dig for samples so i don't i couldn't tell you where the best places to 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 to, to dig is i just know the places that i like to go to now now these are the kind of stores that me and anthony will joke about flying to for the weekend if we're not on tour just to like get out of town and hang out with each other we'll and and truthfully he'll do it he'll do it without me when i'm when i'm talking about it i'm joking because it's like ah it's really me going well oh, it's you invite me with one of these times you know what i'm saying it's just but but it's a that's how good those stores are. I kind of only go to one store here and that's shake it. Shake so it. Don't really have to go anywhere else. I've been going there since it opened 20 years ago. So Sean, don't know what I mean. I have a rapport with the employees. So there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of digging. There's more of a walking in and being shown what is in this box behind the counter. There's plenty to dig for. Just, I'm not really looking for music. I'm looking for whale noises and computer sounds. Do either of you have a favorite toy from when you were younger? Speak and spell. E.T., phone home, you know. R-E-D. You, you remember the show short, the movie Short Circuit with Johnny Five? Ali Sheedy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, man. She could do no wrong, man. When I was, when I was, when I was a teenager, Ali Sheedy was, she was kind of goth in a, a, a breakfast club. And I didn't know anything about gothic. And so for me, that was like, uh, what's the word? Exotic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was immediately like Ali Sheedy. <laughs> All right, Brad, this one's for Brad. This one's uh, most deaf or deaf leopard. Oh, deaf leopard all day. The drummer alone there. How about this one for you, Sean? Black delicious or black thought? Black thought. Fan of both. But but to me, black thought might be the greatest rapper of all time. He might be he might he might just be the best rapper to ever to ever rap. How do you feel about that the 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 move with um them doing the Jimmy show like you know what when it first happened I was not that it was any of my business but I was trepidatious for a number of reasons cuz I I didn't want this to like hurt what he was I didn't want it to hurt what any of them were you know what I'm saying but really I feel like it 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 just forced them all to grow even more and man now the thing is this since they've been doing it he's even better to me so the fact that he's forced to 
think in new ways and do things and flex different muscles, I think just really made him a, even just a stronger artist altogether. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I already thought he was dope. Like he was already one of, one of my favorites, but I, I think the Fallon show just, man, just imagine, you know, you're 10,000 hours. We're all going for that. 10, this dude's got like 20,000 hours. You know what I'm saying? Like he's way ahead of everybody else. Do you feel like um, at, from a fan's standpoint, it is kind of a fan's business. What, I mean, obviously it's not your, their business of what anyone <clears throat> does with their career, but still as a fan, usually you don't want, like you say, you don't want someone doing something that could hurt that you feel like could hurt, but I don't know. Sometimes. You know, there's that, but then also because of the fact that I get to live with one foot behind the curtain, I also have to check myself and remind myself that it's literally none of my fucking business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I gotta, I gotta respect what people decide to do and just watch and learn from it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and, and so, so I have one foot on both sides. Cause yes, as a fan, you're always kind of like, Oh, you know, I was, I had a lot of feelings about Prince, right. As, as Prince, uh, even as a kid, as he matured or whatever you want to call it, and then grew and then spread his wings and then spread them again. And then all these things he did, I had opinions about it. And then as, as, as I got older, I realized, man, shut the fuck up. Your opinion does not mean shit. This is another, for starters, this is another person's life. They're making life decisions. They're not making decisions based on what I think is fresh. Cause again, I could be a fucking idiot. I, maybe I don't know what's fresh, really. I just know what I like. You know what I'm saying? And so, so when I, re, when, I, when I checked myself and reminded myself, man, these are people's lives and they're making life decisions, not just art decisions. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to just sit down and just watch. Now, I might not like every decision. I might not like every Prince song. I might not like everything that, that anybody does, but I don't, I don't necessarily feel like that my opinion is so strong that I need to like force my opinion onto anybody. That that's something you came into as an adult or um, as um, your career started um, both as an yeah. adult and late in my career and late in my adulthood. I was a late bloomer in general, you know, because even in my earlier parts of my career, I was a dickhead. I was an opinionated piece of shit. Listen, I'm still opinionated and I'm still a piece of shit. I'm just not squishing them together. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, do you have a favorite spot in the country, a favorite place other than home? Cincinnati's home, right? For you. Yeah. Other than that, do you have a favorite spot that's like the joint that wipes out all the noise? No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been anywhere in a long time. Um, no, not really. All right. Motorhead or Portis head? Motorhead. Yeah, I figure. Yeah. Uh, Sean, you're you're in uh, Minneapolis, right? I am in Minneapolis. We've been going to Minneapolis every year for the Uptown Art Fair. I've been doing that show for like 12 years now, but we haven't been since... 2020 no 2019 oh, 2019 and um see a whole year a whole year I, like, what the yeah. we're supposed to be there this upcoming august but what i what i was wondering and what me and my wife were wondering is is there a palpable tension in the air like in the city can you f just with everything that's kind of happening is that can you feel that in the in the city at all you know i don't actually know i i do not leave my house for for much, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I haven't been to a, 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 a social event or have been around anybody outside of my family unit. And, and then, then I've got aunt and I've got my brother and his family and, you know, a couple of uh, my wife's friends and their families. And that's it. My mom, I, you know, I have not, I have not seen anybody. You know what I mean? Um, now with that said, there, there has to be, but there also has to be the need to keep walking, keep trudging, keep moving, keep, keep pushing, you know? And so the, the worst part, the scariest part about things like grief and frustration and anger, they make you stand in, in one spot. It's really hard to keep it moving forward. And that's oftentimes why we, we select people that can help galvanize us to get us moving forward. You know, it's like somebody gets that that job or that role in the community or in the family or what have you, because without somebody doing that, without somebody activating, organizing and activating all that anger, that anger sits in one spot, you know, and it, and it kills you. It's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's fucking science. It's really bad for your body. It's really bad for your brain, you know? So yes, I believe that there's a lot of frustration here and, and there's anger. And I would say, you know, people are like, well, ever since the uprising in 2020, ever since George Floyd was murdered, it's like, man, this stuff has been here for a lot longer than that. It's been here and it's been 
uh, a part of the landscape and probably not even just here. So what I'm speaking is probably even maybe even a little bit more relatable to anybody. The point is people are upset. People are angry. People are frustrated with the way things have been for the last year, four years, 20 years, 50 years, 400 years. Uh, but people keep moving. People got to keep kind of pushing along and you got to find time to be happy and to be gentle with yourself and to, and to, to you know, to recognize your own fragility because life is fragile. We can all die for any reason. I don't want to sound like a bumper sticker, but it's like, you know, you're going to die. Everybody's going to die and it can happen any way. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you gotta, I don't know, you gotta take all that. You know, I, I heard somebody say once it's a revolution, but we still got to like find time to eat and, and, and enjoy each other and, eat, and, and, and bathe our children. And you know what I'm saying? Like all of these things still have to exist Otherwise, you just you, you stand still if you don't if you don't focus on everything else. Yeah, and when you're speaking about dying, I, pardon me for uh, <laughs> mentioning it, but I just I had just listened to that bastard sermon podcast, Brad, and I never I never heard the stories about you dying, and that, um, that blew me away. But I, I was just thinking about like the things you when you you know actually dying is mm-hmm. uh, gives you some sort of perspective, you know. Yeah. Um- to sum it all up, when you do it twice, you feel like a fucking moron. Mm-hmm. I can talk about it all day for real, but, you know, you roll the dice, you lose sometimes. Um, do you, you guys, you, you do, I'm going to throw, can I throw some TV ones out at you? Oh, I do some shading on these. I fucking old, love TV, bro. Old, no. That's like going to be old school TV. I fucking love TV, bro. All right. WKRP or Night Court? WKRP. Are you fucking serious? Cincinnati, like, you know. I mean, yeah, I get it. I still sample that. Fucking Night Court, man. Night Court? Night Court was fucking amazing, man. (laughs) WKRP was legit. Don't, I mean, don't get it wrong. But here's the thing. I. (laughs) Night Court had a fucking magician. (laughs) WKRP had fucking Howard Hessman. Night Court had a fucking magician. Who, the judge? Yeah, 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 Harry. Yeah, and I believe that he uh, ended up. Sean, we had Venus flytrap. Yeah, you did have Venus flytrap. He trap. played all the breaks. There's an episode where he's scratching, partially clad, in fact, scratching episode. First nudity ever on regular TV. <laughs> Venus flytrap, WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> and and uh, what's what was the woman's name? Oh. Lonnie Anderson. Mm-hmm. Lonnie Anderson, Sean. Did you have a Lonnie Anderson on Night Court? No. Nah. You had three broke hookers and a magician. We had Venus Flytrap with Naked Breaks and Lonnie Anderson. WKR fucking B. Cincinnati. I mean, honestly, I don't have a horse in the game. I just was jealous of the question. <laughs> this one's for you, Sean. Uh, family Ties or Family Matters? I've never seen Family Matters. Uh, I don't even know who's in that show. But Is that the one with Urkel? Yes. <laughs> oh, I never saw that show. I just knew the 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 meme. He was the original meme. He is the first fucking <laughs> meme. Um. I don't know if I could pick one having never seen, I would have to go with family ties. Obviously. Why, why family ties? Oh, okay. Because, uh, you know, it had McFly. (laughs) Had McFly. (laughs) That was his name. Uh, family matters had Urkel who now has his own line of weed. Family ties had, uh, Justine Bateman. Family matters had a future porn star. Family ties had fucking Alan thick. Oh, Ah, that was a gut shot. I can't really come back to Alan Thick. None of them had Howard Hessman, though. You fuck it with me. Damn. Here, oh, wait, 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 wait. My cat can eat a whole watermelon. That was Howard Hessman and uh, Crispin Glover. And what? My cat can eat a whole what? Reuben and Ed. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know if I've seen that. Oh, 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 man. I'm sorry for wrecking your evening. I've just <laughs> recently now getting into the point where my wife tells me, I have this thing where I'll just pretend like I know something. And I've just recently gotten into the habit. You were born a male gender. That's why you do that. That's what it is. Like, I know, but now we- I'm getting in the habit of actually admitting like, oh, I've never seen Ruben and Ed. That was really hard for me to say. You're, well, yeah, you're making progress here. And I give your wife props for that. She's obviously <laughs> coaching you and she's doing a great job. Listen, Ruben and Ed is uh, Crispin Glover. You know who he is. Uh, and, and Howard Hessman, you know who he is. Well, Howard Hessman uh, joins this like one of those like self-help kind of things where you got to go out and sell some stuff. It's like a pyramid scheme kind of thing. So he's going to make himself feel better by selling somebody else's product. So he's trying to sell something to I think it's a, he's trying to sell the self-help. I can't remember that part, but the TV series. 
No, it was a movie. He shows up to sell it to Crispin Glover, and Crispin Glover's cat has just died. And now, somehow, Crispin Glover and Howard Hessman are taking a road trip with the dead cat in the cooler to go find some spiritual <laughs> awakening because Howard Hessman feels like this kid is going to lead me to this, like, help that I'm trying to get for myself. And Crispin Glover is looking for a place to bury his cat. Is that what the movie is about? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to you go You made that up. That's not what the movie is about. Tangent, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's, about cat, it's about a cat burial? It's, a, it's about a cat burial. No, now I have to watch it tonight. That's my <laughs> night. You got to watch it. It's a good film. Punky Brewster or Silver Spoons? Punky Brewster all day. Silver Spoons, though, was... Uh, Here, was no, no, it? Ah, listen, you can't back up anything that has Rick Schroeder on it. Yeah, I think he's clowning, man. <laughs> Fuck Rick Schroeder. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I I can't even argue. I don't know nothing about him or what you're talking about, but you can tr- just trust. I'm me. sold. Trust you me. sold. You sold it to me. I'm yeah, funky all day. John, how about Voltron or Transformers? Transformers. Oh man, I can never get anyone to go with Voltron. I love Voltron. Voltron was cool. I've never watched either of them. You never saw tra- the Transformers movie when when fucking Optimus died. You ain't cry. I didn't see that. Voltron was cool, but that's like comparing fucking He-Man. Great comparison, actually. Voltron was He-Man, what Transformers was to fucking Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like Transformers was high tech. It was it was a, this thing that was this movie, that movie. No, I've never seen. I have the record. I've never seen the movie. When the cartoon came, it was a, like one of the first cartoon movies. I think it came out in like 84. It was the mm. first cartoon that they said shit. They said the word shit in it. In a Transformers movie? Yeah, yeah, it, no, the cartoon. Not the live action, but the cartoon movie that came out in, in the theaters. And it was the context that was most important. It was uh, Megatron was like, I'm going to kick you in your shit. Really? He's just they, like that. He's, that's what he said. Dude, no, they didn't. Yes, he did. He sounded like he, he sounded like you without the vulnerability. He was like, I'm going to kick you in your shit. <laughs> and fucking uh, what was nobody's ever sampled this. <laughs> there was nobody's a bird. There was a bird that used to turn into a tape deck. I think his name was Bird of Paradise and he got kicked in his shit. <laughs> I'm going to kick you in your shit. I'm looking this bullshit up. <laughs> Who cusses? Megatron says, I'm going to kick you in your shit. Just like that. He's like, a little shit. What was the kid? That was the boombox or something. That was that. Was that his name? Boombox. His name was Larry. The boombox name was Larry. Larry. It was la, 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 Larry. Hold up. Yeah, his fucking name was Edgar. No, it was uh, Shane. But it was Bumblebee. Please activate the explosives. This doesn't stop it. Nothing will. The explosives are activated. I'm gonna kick you in your shit. <laughs> he said it. He said I'm gonna kick you in your fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> It isn't even dented. Oh, shit. What are we going to do now? Little puke. <laughs> Brad, how about different strokes or facts of life? Whoa. Oh. Oh. oh, you know the answer to this shit. Come on, man. Well, this is a functionality question. What could you get from different strokes that you couldn't get from facts of life? I mean, facts of life had Joe, Blair, Tootie. Over here on different strokes, you got a creepy old dude molesting kids or some shit. I don't know, man. I'm going to go with uh, Sean. Initially, I was immediately going to go with Facts of Life. But as you got to talking, I got to thinking. Mr. Drummond, though? Mr. Drummond was Mrs. Garrett. Like, they had, they was comparable. They're kind of equal. I did a movie. My uh, fourth feature film that I made, I had Todd Bridges in it. And the first meeting that we, we had with him, we were at a dinner. It was just like a meeting that we were trying to see if he wanted to play this role. Actually, uh, Danny Trejo was supposed to play the role first, but we lost him. So you, they went from Danny Trejo to Todd Bridges? No, it didn't even happen that way. It went from, C. Tom, it went from Danny Trejo to C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> Fucking soul man. To Todd Bridges. <laughs> See, Thomas Howell actually dropped out the, the week before the sh- we started shooting, and so Todd Bridges was who I had access to. The moments prior to these pictures are the only ones that matter. What do you see here? <laughs> Still, your the jump makes no sense at all. I know, because I was only just going for a cameo role, someone that I could afford that had somewhat of a name. And Todd Bridges was right there in your top four. 
He was within your grasp. Is what he you're was saying. within my grasp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you could get him on Cameo for like 200 bucks like to be in your movie. Like This was like 2000, 2001, I think. Read, re- read these lines. He was, and he had like maybe six lines or something. But we were sitting there having, having drinks and um, the, the waitress had come by and he had, someone had left a drink in front of him. And he asked the waitress, he said, uh, can you please uh, move that glass? And it was sitting right in front of him. And so she moved it. And I was like, oh, what a fucking dick. Like, what, are you so lazy you can't move a glass? He leaned over to me and he said, if Papa, like, if anyone catches a photograph of me, like, reaching out, even touching that glass, because um, this was 2001, he was, like, all over the paper. Todd, Todd Bridges falling off the wagon, yeah, all that. Yeah. But I thought, I just thought that shit was interesting. And then he continued to tell me, like, he, he was like, I've been, I've been not been a crack addict for longer than I have been a crack addict. And all people want to talk about is that I was a crackhead. Yeah. That's, that's interesting to know. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, I, that's a perspective I never would have thought of in his, in his story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The old, the old dude on different strokes, the Mr. Drummond just always creeped me out. He was a creepy. Do you guys ever watch um, Mr. Belvedere? No. Oh. <laughs> Sean, do you ever watch Mr. Belvedere? It's a creepier dude than Mr. Drummond. Nah, I never saw that. I think somehow I missed a whole era of television uh, because I never saw the other one you said too, the Urkel one. I never saw Belvedere. And and when I'm thinking about it, I think like kind of like my 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 late high school era. I just kind of for some reason I fell off the yeah. TV thing is TV and movie thing is all just me looking for samples. I couldn't tell you what any of the movies or shows are about. It's just I used to write down dialogue from videotapes so I could go back. If you needed a line, I'd flip through this giant book. This is before YouTube and the Googles. It's unfortunate that you keep dissing Mr. Drummond, though. Philip Drummond. <laughs> Just saying, awful creepy. Well, yeah, but like sometimes he made that creep work. He made it work for him. Remember, did you, do you remember him in um, The NeverEnding Story? Oh, who was he in The NeverEnding Story? He was that big fucking turtle. Sean. If you think about Sean, it now, you can you recognize it. You could see him. Sean, Sean, you are you see. are you sure that's the turtle? Or are you just making this shit up, dude? I know you. I've, I've fallen for this a thousand times. If, if you go, Google the turtle, no, the giant, the giant turtle. One time on one time on tour, Sean and Sage launched into this story, and for years I believed this story about it was true. Why wouldn't you believe it? No, no, because it was a scene from Goodwill Hunting, and I had never seen it. And you two convinced me you were battered by your de- the same story by both of you. Years later, there it is in Goodwill Hunting. I even asked Sage the last time he was here. He's like, "How long did you believe that?" I'm like, "About twelve years." Goodwill Hunting was like Groundhog Day meets Training Day. <laughs> training Day. If, if me and you sat down and watched it right now, it would turn into a contest between who can recite more of the fucking dialogue absolutely i watched training sean told me training day is a good movie and i'm like yeah whatever and he's like no i'm saying watch it when i go out i'm like all right i watched training day and then every night after that i watched training day every night on tour every night and then ever after tour i literally watched training day like a thousand times in fact it won an academy award or something because of me and sean do you have any opinion on the war uh the war tour possibly coming back in 2021 possibly is it is it been announced is it coming I, I don't know if they officially announced it i just saw that they it was coming back in 2021 but i don't i don't know that for sure last time i saw one um i went to see a terror let's say there's 300 bands and like it had, it had changed for like my age i wouldn't go now because none of those bands are any good the bands that we would the bands we toured with i loved all them but as time wore on the the, the sound change and like i just wasn't into it anymore Look at showing their age over here. I have to show my age on that one. These young, these young bands aren't any good. When we were there, cats were doing that to us. When we were there, they played real instruments. There were, yeah, they did that to us. There was old dudes yelling shit at us about it. Uh, it's not real music to us. How many events? How many work towards the atmosphere do? Two. Two. Two thousand three. Two thousand four. Two thousand three was the first time I saw you guys on stage together for at in, in Salt Lake City. 0304 was when we did it because it was after God Loves Ugly. There's a lot of sleeping on those tours. Will sound, sound set be returning? I hope not. As soon as Scribble Jam does. <laughs> is Scribble Jam complete? Is that ship sailed? <laughs> it's been gone. Sound set was there. You go to Sound set. Scribble's gone and then Sound set was there. Sound set was awesome. I wouldn't want to run it. We already did that with Scribble. There's nothing fun about having to being tied to a festival at all. Trust me, it's a lot of work. 
And I think everything needs to end so that something new can be forced to arise. Because otherwise, oftentimes, if something is there in its place, then it becomes a game of, well, how can I take its place? As opposed to a game of, well, what can I do to supplement and to make even more shit happen? You know what I'm saying? And so I, I didn't see that during the Soundset tenure, but now post Soundset, I see this wide open space specifically in this town for something different and interesting to, to pop off and happen. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I personally, you know, when I take that into consideration along with just like how much work Soundset is and let's keep it real. I was not necessarily one of the busier people when it came to Soundset. I wasn't at the board meetings and I wasn't, you know, <laughs> making decisions on who we're going to book and any of that. I just was like, what time do I go on? Or, you know, I was sometimes like a artist liaison for w w the artists that weekend that would come to town because they felt comfortable hollering at me, talking to me because I'm another artist. You know, they look at me like, oh, you're an artist that runs a label without realizing I don't I don't run shit. I don't wear that hat. You know what I'm saying? Are you kidding? I would have ran the label into the ground 20 years ago. You know, like sound set. I was not I was one of the faces of it, but I wasn't one of the more active roles. So also with that said. I don't want it to come back because I saw how much work it was for these people that I care about. You know what I'm saying? And I saw, and it's crazy because you get to see them go through all of these different emotions. It's a lot of work. It takes up their, a majority of their space and time and effort. And then, you know, you can have 20 people tell you you're amazing. You saved my life. You're the best, but it just takes that one person to be like, you fucking suck to make all of that other shit go away. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you see it in, on the internet, in the, in the comment sections and all these things. It's like, you know, 500 people will like your video and, and say great things. And it's just that one person that's just like, this is the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. And, and you're just like, oh man, like you don't have to like it, but you're literally saying that this was worse than crawl. <laughs> you don't like crawl? <laughs> He's got a point. Come on, crawl. <laughs> Oh, you man. just throw those movies under the bus. Next thing you know, you're going to badmouth Beastmaster. Wow. <laughs> anyway, you know, you know, you feel me, though. So it's like it, it opens up space for somebody else to make something happen. It opens up space for ourselves to make something else happen. You know what I mean? It's just I, I and so, you know, it did its job, man. That shit was around for 12 years. That's a good run, too. That's a long time to run it. That's a pretty good yeah. run. I saw the people organizing sound set to try to force sound set to evolve over the years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because things have to, they have to evolve. It can't just be, you know, at the end of it, the joke was I finally got my own stage and we called it atmosphere and friends because that's what Soundset was for like the first five years, you know, it was just atmosphere and friends. And so it was like, we just created a stage over on the side that kind of still represented that. But even then I knew like, okay, this, this is, it's time for something else to happen. Some, some sort of evolution, you know? I remember the last time me and Sean were on stage together. I found a picture of it. You have, you have it? I have it right here. It's uh, I, mean, I don't know what year it is, but this is that, I like the disposable throwaway cameras we used to use. So this is the picture of me and you on stage. <laughs> I remember that now. I remember that. You, you guys hadn't eaten in a while? <laughs> That's his mic right there. That Crescent Moon was the hype, man. There's Crescent Moon. That was an amazing night. <laughs> no, but there's the Warped Tour one. I remember that. Remember that? that? I do. That was in Boston. Sean shoved me off the stage in that time. This, this is an actual picture. This is not a drawing. This is a picture with a real camera. They caught they, the moment. They, they caught it right at that moment. Yeah. See? And then uh, Sean had... Oh, Merce was the hype man on that one. There it is, 316. Yep. <laughs> the crowd is here, but you can't see it because of the flash. That was in That's Boston. Me. That was actually the first time I ever met Talib Quilly. He's over here. He got cropped out on accident. Disposable camera. Sean looks good in those. I look like a fat falling peanut. Those are actual pictures. They don't make those cameras anymore. A fat falling peanut. The Boston show was the first out that, that that last Boston show. It was at the end of the sh at the end of the tour, 2004, I think. Yeah, that was wasn't that like their 10 year anniversary or something? That was the first time I met Taylor Quilly, and I also think that might have I think Everlast might have been at that show. That might have been the one time I met Everlast because I think he showed up to kick it with somebody. He showed up to take it with caves. Remember from uh, Lords of Brooklyn, Everlast and HR from Bad Brains were on stage when we were performing and we turned around and there was Everlast. And then when you tried to talk to HR security, kind of, you weren't really allowed to walk right up to that dude. You kind of had to get cleared in there. And I think that was the same show where uh, you jumped off stage to chase somebody who threw a, a full bottle of Gatorade. That was Boston. Yeah. That, yeah. That was hit, Boston. Hit, 
It hit Merce in the face. It hit Merce in the face. Way oh. in the back. Yeah, and somebody just lobbed it. And they weren't trying. You can't you can't aim at a rapper on stage from, from 30 yards away with a Gatorade bottle. It just happened to hit Merce in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, and Merce stopped like, because, you know, and then Brad fucking jumped off the fucking stage and went and chased somebody. And I just kept rapping because the beat was still going. He didn't stop the beat. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck, it's the bird. It must have been the bird. They caught that kid. Um, Beret caught that kid and they had him against the fence and I'm running like from 20 yards away. So by the time I get there, I'm basically out of steam <laughs> and I'm going to punch this kid and I'm 10 feet from him. And he goes, I'm fucking 14. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. Shit. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm 14. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I realized the beat's still playing. Sean's still going. And so I'm like, oh. <laughs> Give me your left shoe. Yeah, give me your shoe. And then he gave me a shoe, <laughs> and then I jumped back on stage. I gave him the shoe back afterwards, or maybe Sean threw it back. Here you go, kid, or whatever. But I ran 20 yards, man. I was done. That ruined my buzz and my body for like three days. I was sore everywhere. I don't run. He was a kid at the show being doing what you do at the Warped Tour, throw shit at the crowd, throw it at the at stage. I think, I think any other band would have just played it off. You know what I mean? Or they're, they're also, they're watching for that shit. Like, we were not looking for flying objects. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, uh, you know that it was a possibility, but you just weren't seasoned enough to know that it's always. I mean, you you think the chances of this big ass gator in from the back of the crowd and Merce's little ass running around and he timed and he landed right here in that bottle. Boom. And down he went. And I'm like, you'll never see that again. I'd love to see the video. That was grand. I mean, it was like, oh, four. I don't think people were really on the video like that yet. Yeah, it was still camcorders. Now and my kid's like, what's a camcorder? You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, you couldn't just, it wasn't a thousand phones in the air back then either. It was, you had to love the camera. Rodney O or Type O? Rodney O. Rodney O and Joe Cooley. Yeah, man. Everlasting bass. The plats alone, man. Come on. That took a lot of work to get the hair to look like that. I'm going Rodney O and Joe Cooley all day. Gangstar or Mazzy Star? Gangstar. Mega death or napalm death? Napalm death. Dave Mustaine is a fucking cocksucker. Cool Herc or Cool Keith? Cool Keith. I love Cool Herc, but like I'm actually, I, I, I have Cool Keith's phone number in my phone and you know, it is what it is. What is your, we'll start with uh, Brad. You have a, a song that you use for uh, like a mental boost. Any, like just one song that no matter when you put it on, that's you're in your, you're in your spot. Anything by MOP ever. That's it. It doesn't matter. MOP. How about you, Sean? I don't know if I have a song, you know, but but there are definite albums that I could play that will uh, put me in per- specific spaces. And Sign of the Times by Prince is one of those albums. Oh, Sean, do you have any tattoos? I, uh, a few. A few. Did- you know, I'm not covered by any means, but. How, how about you, Brad? Do you have any tattoos? <laughs> no, this is just a bad skin rash from touring. How long was your session on the head? I forgot if it took two or three times. To- I don't know, 18 or 19 hours total, maybe. How many different sessions did you do? Three. <sighs> did, did, was, your, was your brain rattling? I just, I've never had anything. Your head is not as bad as your throat. The throat was the worst thing I ever did. I, I'm surprised by that. I was always told that uh, if I don't have full sleeves, I shouldn't get my face or my neck tattooed. Don't go for the neck or the face until you're, until you're covered elsewhere. If you're going straight for the neck or the face, you might be doing it wrong. You think about your, the head thing. You've brushed your hair or wrestling or whatever you've done to your head your whole life. By the time you're getting your head tattooed, there's not much. The nerve endings are kind of dead. Like I sat through it like you'd think you'd scream. And I, I did that one like a champ. This one, I... First thing, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm, yeah, I passed out on the outline. It got finished in that sitting, but I passed out. And then the second time back, I did okay. But, yeah, that was the thing. Like, you're waiting to start your head and your neck, and then you have to finish everything else first. Or you kind of you take off your shirt, and they're like, so you just went right to your neck and your head. You look completely ridiculous. <laughs> you know, if you take uh, napalm death and mega death, you put it together, you got maple death. And I think that would be a good fucking name. Maple Death? Maple Death. That's, that might be the next Atmosphere album title. Maple Death. I like Maple that. Death. I got a new, new record called Tub Water. That's not true, but I just wanted to go with the Maple Death. I want to keep up. Are you, are, you, are you thinking about making another record anytime soon? Am I asking questions that you probably don't, you shouldn't be answering yet? 
I turned in a record a year and a half ago, right before COVID. And then the one pressing plant burned down, the lacquer place burned down. And so that's just about to come out, the Ohio Dirt record. And then while I was waiting on that, I did the record with Brett, the everything burns, everybody bleeds. I figured out how to press it quicker, and now that's going to beat the record that I turned in. That one with me and Brett Fullerton will be out like in June, and hopefully Ohio Dirt will see the light of day around the same time. You, you think you're going to just be allowed to say what you just said and keep it moving without me going, what do you mean you uh, figured out how to press it quick? I just figured it out, okay. by the way. But I mean, I, the way you say it, it's like some Harry Potter shit. You're like, I just <laughs> I just figured out this new spell. Look, look, it is like when when I was informed, a friend of mine was not having problems pressing records when the rest of the world was. I went to his spot and that guy was like, oh, yeah, it's about eight months unless you do this. And then I talked to my friend and he walked me through doing this. Yeah, And it's cheaper. I'm about to take my clothes off for you. Okay, stop. Knock it off. Well, let me hey, tell stop. you more about it then, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, were we supposed to wear a sports coat too? <laughs> it's my drawing. Oh, yeah. You got a fucking, you're wearing a suit, Man, bro. If we had known that, we would at least put a jacket on. It's my drawing jacket with my with my quiet riot. Just making sure. I didn't, you know, didn't want to feel like we were underprepared. I thought right. I would start wearing a jacket. I'm into it, man. I think it's a good look. Why is that funny? I like the jacket, man. You're gonna see me. You're gonna see me somewhere wearing a jacket now, and you're gonna be like, you know what? I wonder if that fucking dude stole that from me. You know, I always wanted to wear a jacket, and I and I still keep trying, but I'll keep trying it. <laughs> okay, well, let me ask you this: Does do you feel um confined? Is that the word? I mean, did you feel like a little bit like you don't like you like if you had to fight a bear right now, would you feel a little bit more vulnerable? Oh no, not even. I'll fight a bear. Fuck yeah, then the jacket is the way to go, bro. As long as you can still fight a bear. A while ago, I used to try to rock the, the jacket with the lava lava. You know what the lava lava is? <laughs> nah, isn't, it, is it? isn't it what you say when you step in the lava? It's a salmon. It's a... It's like a, like what they wear in Hawaii on the bottom. Yeah, you know. Uh -oh. Yeah, like when you wrap it, when you get out of the shower, you wrap the towel around your waist sort of vibe. So you're rocking a jacket with the lava. With the lava lava. lava. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's I like fucking that. outstanding, astounding. I think that you should fuck with that. It doesn't work. What, what do you mean it doesn't work? How could it not work? It works. It's got a partial dress and a. It, you're partying from down here and up here, you're all business. Bro, you're drawing. You're not playing fucking rugby. Slow down, bro. Like, you could totally make it work. I think so, too. I'm going with Sean on that one. 100%. <laughs> What was your what was your first concert, Brad? Fresh Fest Two, Run DMC, Houdini, Eric B and Rakim, Bismarcky maybe at that one. It came two years in a row. That's when they played stadiums. They played the Coliseum. I still have the ticket for that one. That's the first time I got jumped for my shoes. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Give me your shoes. That's why you have that shoe fetish. I didn't lose my shoes, but I got my ass beat defending him. Where the dude was like. Well, you know, he's trying really hard. Let's let the little dude go. I was, I was a little kid, but I fought for my shitty Pumas and I switched to Adidas right after that. <laughs> Did you, and no one tried to jack your Adidas since? You could pull them off easier and hide them. Hey, look, it's barefoot Brad on the park in the playground. Where'd his shoes go? I don't know. He's got some big pockets. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. What about you, Sean? What was your first concert? Uh, the first concert that I went to without family, without parents, was uh, UTFO. I saw them here at a, at a club called First Avenue. It was the first time I'd ever been in First Avenue. Uh, I bought the ticket from a store called Wide Angle Records, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was a comp ticket that I was sold, but it worked, so I got in. The night prior, me and my homie Mark went out to a suburb called Bloomington to a skate rink called Saints because that night of the week, I can't really remember, so we'll pretend it's a Friday night, was like Friday nights at Saints. People would all go out there from Minneapolis. It was like the funk night. You know what I mean? It was the night that they would actually play some hip hop, whatever. Some people would skate, some people would dance, and people like me would just play video games uh, and just hang out to be around cool people that also liked rap music. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 
But on this particular Friday night, whoever promoted the, the show at UTFO had also worked into their situation. And I, and I didn't know none of this until I got older and, and look back on it now. But the promoter convinced UTFO to come do a appearance at Saints to help hype up the show tomorrow because tickets probably weren't just cracking. You know what I'm saying? Like this was uh, this was after the Roxanne Roxanne album, but this was actually a little ways after it, not too far after it. Um, they didn't have another record yet. I went to Saints that night and they came and showed up and they they did one song. They did Roxanne, Roxanne, and then a fight broke out. I don't know if they were going to do more than one song or if they just were coming in to do the one song to hype up tomorrow's show and be like, hey, make sure you come out to the show for a stab tomorrow, whatever, whatever. Uh, but a fight broke out at the end of Roxanne, Roxanne, and people grabbed UTFO and started to rush them out the front door. Well, because of the fight and the melee and me being 14 years old, I also was like, let me rush out the fucking front door and get away from where they're fighting. Well, me and Mark ended up being caught right in the wave that was pushing UTFO out the door. So I'm standing next to Kango Kid and fucking Dr. Ice, and we're all getting pushed out the door. And I'm a little kid to them, but in my brain, I don't think I saw that I was little because you don't know how little you are when you're little. You know what I mean? Like. So anyway, I'm like rushed out and I think I'm cool because I'm at the fucking party. You know, I used to come to this party. I always thought I was cool when I was there. Right? But now I'm fucking getting rushed out and there's a fight. And one of them says, and I think it might have been Kanga was like, damn, I didn't know Minneapolis was like this. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of like on some like, damn, they, they fight here, too, because I thought they only fought in New York or some <laughs> shit. Right. But. Nonetheless, I remember looking up at him and being like, yeah, like on some like, yeah, it's fucking rough here. <laughs> Faking the funk like I had ever been in a fucking fight at that point. Brad's talking about I got jumped for my shoes. At, man, if I would have got jumped for my shoes at 14, I might have never left the house again, man. I was a fucking fragile, fragile kid. My uh, ego was fragile. You know, the, the fact that this. This moment where I looked up at Kango and was like, yeah, man, they'd be fighting mm -hmm. here. It's it's this and that thinking I was being cool. Now I know like he probably was looking at it like this fucking dumb white kid. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, if that wouldn't have happened exactly how that happened, I don't even know that I would have gotten the fucking burst of self-esteem that I needed to take me to the next burst of self-esteem, which took me to the next burst of self-esteem, which eventually led to the road to here I am this fucking loser rapper it's moments like that it's little things like that that like i feel like definitely played a role in making sure that i played a part in this shit somehow okay this one's for sean right off of the bat who's the first name that comes to mind when i say batman ben affleck batman motherfucking uh, ben affleck is not ben ben affleck is batman as much as my entire butthole is batman not oh. very much Ben Affleck's Batman. No. No, he's not. Yeah. No, he's not. He can't be Batman. No. Michael Why? Keaton's Batman. <laughs> Michael I mean, Keaton if, is Batman. Listen, if Michael Keaton can be Batman, Ben fucking Affleck can be Batman. This dude can be Batman. Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. But not uh, Ben Affleck. You don't see Ben Affleck's statue in here, do you? What's that dude's name again? Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman. Yes, he could. Wait, no, not Patrick Bateman. Well, and that that version of it was Patrick Bateman. Oh, that's the American Psycho thing. Yeah, the ah, penis, Christian right? Bale. Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, so, what, what an actor. Fuck acceptable yeah. Batman. Ben Affleck, not acceptable Batman. Wait, what is that thing? The Furby. Furby. <laughs> Man, what's wrong with Ben Affleck? He doesn't have a spine. Because it's right <laughs> here, Sean. It's right here. <laughs> He's like, man, how do I get them off my fucking show? I know. He's, I, like, I, I he's, he's like, I got. It's like, yo, no. when you gotta find a, you gotta waste a fork to get the shit out of your out of your shoe. No. This fucking Please fork, I gotta throw in the trash now. Because if I try to put this fork sure. in the fucking sink, my mom. Did you give that. me the poop fork from last week? <laughs> no, I threw it uh, away. Man, listen, Did you man, throw it away? Just throw the shoe away, man. <laughs> do us all a favor. No, that. But listen, that's a valid point. The poop fork and the piss cup. Everybody's had the piss cup too. You try to put it in the back of the cabinet. One of your boys gets it. Then you decide how good a friend he is. Do you let him do the piss cup? And then do you dig up the poop fork? Everybody's got one. And I got one in my cabinet. It's a FC Cincinnati. Cause fuck them. Who got the poop fork? The you know. neighbor at the barbecue. Oof. <laughs> no, you throw, the, you throw the poop fork away, man. You know, I occasionally have kept a poop fork, Sean. I'm sorry. Nah, bro. You can't do that. That's you just... keep the pea glass. 
I don't keep the pee glass. I've, I've never. You've woken up and had to piss so bad and couldn't do it. And you're like, what do I got? And you've got some Franklin mint Fabergé glass there. Wait, why, why wouldn't I just go outside? Like if I I can't go to the bathroom because like there's a roommate in there or something like why would I waste a cup instead of just going outside? Because it's Franklin Mint. They can hold anything. It's Fabergé. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I really like your dress. Oh, yeah. I just got it at Versace. (laughs) (laughs) Bikini killer thrill kill Colt. Bikini. Yeah, bikini kill. I don't even know Thrill Kill Cult stuff really though, so that's easy. Bikini Kill is easy on that one. This one uh, for Sean. This is a fuck, fuck, Mary kill. Soul Asylum, Soul Coughing, and Soul Position. I'd marry Soul Position. <sighs> Can I kill both the other ones? No. <laughs> to be to be honest though, uh, the lead singer from Soul Coughing, M. Doherty. I heard a story once. Uh, somebody was writing something backstage at first to have about me or something. no somebody wrote on a wall like i tagged atmosphere on a wall or some shit this is that first tab and somebody underneath it was like wrote instead of just writing sucks wrote like a a, 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 a like longer comment about how much we suck or something right <laughs> and then the guy from soul coughing underneath there wrote something that was like this like Hey man can't you just be nice to everybody what does that <laughs> negative energy bring you know it was like the most nicest fucking uh endearing and, and then he but then he signed it too which was interesting oh. like <laughs> it was like what and so i'm 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 intrigued by that i and so so yeah i, I wouldn't kill him i wouldn't fuck him change of heart there yeah and, and, the and soul asylum is you know i mean that's some legendary minneapolis shit like those those, those that band took it they took it far man they did their thing and they and they did it on songwriting and connecting with fans you know what i'm saying and so I, I can't shit on them soul position like i got stories about them they'd be the easiest for me to talk shit about they uh soul position on the rhyme Sayers label yeah yeah or not no no they, they 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 put out a few records with us uh blueprint is a good friend of mine he's he's the rapper from soul position he's a friend of dibs too uh and and rjd too is a, another friend of mine goody mob or mob deep mob deep mob deep Prodigy is another rapper that I, I kept high in my list of rappers. Old Dirty or Dirty Rotten Imbeciles? Old Dirty. Yeah. Were you a DRI fan at all? Sure. But still, so Old Dirty. MC Shan or MC5? MC Shan. I know more MC Shan than I know MC5, but I've sampled MC5. Well, I've sampled both of them, but Shan. You rap for a living, but you wish you could sing, sing, sing. What about suicide or suicidal tendencies? Suicidal tendencies. Suicide. Yeah. Suicidal tendencies all day. Suicide. suicide. What about Dice Raw or Raw Digga? Ooh, Raw Digga. Uh, E40 or UB40? <laughs> E40. <laughs> e40. No cherry, cherry. Uh... Hey, hey, don't please don't say that here. <laughs> don't say that song here. <laughs> Maxi Priest or Judas Judas Priest? Maxi Priest. I'm going to have to go Judas Priest. It's a leather thing. Anthrax or Axl Rose? Anthrax. Axl Rose is... A... Rancid or Sid Vicious? Hmm, I don't know. We know all the dudes from Rancid, so... Uh... MC Breed or Hate Breed? I'm going to have to go with MC Breed. Kid Frost or Kid Koala? Oh, come on, man. You can't do that. Kid Frost is super, super OG. And koala's the homie. They're supposed to kind of be difficult. It's Sophie's choice. Shit. And I'm talking about Kid Frost way, way back. For La Raza and all that, like way back. I'm going to go with Kid Koala. Sean can have a... Kid Sensation. Oh. Sir mix a lot. Good call. All right, all right. Shaq or... Shaq. Shaq or that Shaq. Brian Austin Green from Beverly Shaq. Hills Battle 2 Shaq, Shaq. It's like... What was their group called again? Well, he wasn't really in the Fushnikins. He, he was an honorary had, Fush. Yeah, he was like, uh, yeah, he, 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 yeah. I think Shaq Fu was not quite a true Fushnik. I think he was like, <laughs> I, like you said, Brad, he was an honor, honorary. Shaq or Shia LaBeouf? Shaq. 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 Shaq over a lot of rappers, even. Shaq. What about Das Effects or No Effects? Das Effects. Don't call me white. Um, 
Das effects. Iggity, piggity, diggity, shiggity. Buck 65 or buck 50? 65, I go. Buck Come fucking on. Rogers. <laughs> Uncle Buck. Death tones or tone loke? Red hot lover tone. Tone loke, man. I revisited fucking loked after dark recently. And it, it kind of bangs, man. It bangs. You know, it's funny how those delicious vinyl records like held up in a way that I, I would have never, I would have never saw that coming. Either one of you guys have to come up with a, with a new hustle during the pandemic that you'll probably end up continuing to do. Yes. I joined Cameo and I was selling fucking Mother's Day messages on Cameo. I think that's awesome. I might, I might go back to it because it fucking, it definitely put bread on the table. You know, it's been hard for artists because we don't get to tour and we don't get to tour and don't get to tour. We don't get to tour. What do you miss the most about being on the road and touring? Just hanging out with my friends, specifically Anthony and Bill and Randy, Rio and Miles and Cody. Our tour ended February 29th, 2020. And two weeks later, everything was locked up. So we landed just in time. And I, a couple of those people I haven't seen since February 29th, just because I locked myself away. You know, it's just only recently that I, came crawling out to, to say hi to aunt and, and me and Bill FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one time we went for a distance walk uh, last fall when it was still a little bit nice out. Uh, and I've seen Randy a couple of times in person. Um, I'm double vaxxed up now. Me and my wife both are, but you know, they can't vax the kids. And so there's that concern of, of me bringing home enough of a viral load to fucking pass to my kids and then 10 years later one of their fucking kidneys fails or some shit and it's all due to this shit you know what i'm saying it's like ah, I'm, I'm i'm still masking up and still being careful for now what'd you guys draw <laughs> i drew a, a drink coaster uh, oh nice <laughs> it looked kind of like him <laughs> the likeness is really good <laughs> yeah this one this one turned out okay i drew a picture of you drawing that let's see it I didn't have everything I needed to finish, so if I get 15 more minutes to do shading, there's a picture of you drawing me and Sean. Oh, shit, but that looks just like it. This says the uh, turkey, and this is the pony corn. And that, I've been working on that since we started. I, the, 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 the sport coat was a nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you both this. Cats or dogs? dogs remember when they do that thing where they wipe their ass on the grass i don't know yeah. why that's in my head all of a sudden or on the carpet you better you better stop doing that shit on you the gotta, carpet fam you gotta wipe that for them before they come in the house ice cube said ice cube said forget about a dog fool he'll shit in the den and i was like you had a den <laughs> <laughs> you had a fucking den growing up man where did you fucking what grow up man's best friend that yeah was man's best friend man i'm looking at cube like how oh, your family had a den <laughs> <What>? <laughs> i mean i'm not clowning it it's amazing my friends didn't have dens man we didn't have a fucking den we didn't even have finished basements how are you gonna have a fucking den what's a den a den i think it's like a room where it's not your living room it's not your dining room it's like a den, you know, it's like, okay, so like the living room, you watch TV and with the family, right? I think later it turned into what they know now as a man cave. But at this time, the basement, the den, man. So I think the basement could be in the den, the smoker's den, the lounge. It's that you put a TV in there. You let the dog shit in there, according to Cube. <laughs> I'm saying, like, fucking a den, man. I'm just saying a den is kind of like some some upper middle class shit but you have to have a like a basement to have a den easily or you maybe you would have a den off to the, i don't know man you have a let's, den on the second floor listen i hold up you want me to call them and ask them where was the den <laughs> like what Figured. the fuck find out where that den was <laughs> i'm curious man i'm curious and i i swear to god if you did have a den and the dog shit in the den <laughs> me and that dog got to talk like this is the one place you don't shit only it's in the den it's like only shits in the den that's it don't shit in the den because that's obviously where we kick it it's where we hang out it's where we have a beer or i don't know a fucking cigarette it was probably you know cube he's old like us so he probably was you know had a den in like the early 80s or the late 70s so it probably had cigarette smoke in it i want a den you're sitting in your den just the basement, man. Yeah, I think a den would be like a TV room in Cincinnati, right? You know, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 not everybody gets to have a fucking TV room in their house. 
That's true. You know what I'm saying? Some of us had to put it in the living room, but some people were like, nah. Well, I'm that's where it. your TV room goes in the living room is the TV nah, room. Nah, see, but I'm saying some people have a den and they put the TV in the den so that the living room is for conversation and for like, you know, hoity-toity. This sounds like some urban myth shit. This is nah. like Candyman and shit like that. This is this is some this is some other shit, man. This is like Can you, you know, name another reference to the den in any other song ever? Listen, I think the den was for dinks. Dinks were double income, no kids. You had couples who had two, they each had a job, they didn't have no kids, so they were able to fucking get a house with a den. Then they had a kid or two, and so now the bedrooms upstairs get filled up, but the den fucking lives on. I don't know, man. I didn't do it. It's not even my lyric. <laughs> I have never put den in a song. How about you, Brad? Cat or dogs? You know, a cat's only purpose in life is to kill you. And if it was slightly bigger, they would kill you. Wait, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're describing my kids. <laughs> same, same thing, though. You deprogram your kids out of trying to kill you, hopefully by their teens. <laughs> but a cat always wants to kill you. Their dying breath that you think is so adoring is just, I hate you. Let me go <laughs> quietly. Yeah, but you, you cats will shit in a box. That is definitely true. A cat's not going to go down and drop a heap in the den. <laughs> Unless you keep the litter box in the den. You can't keep the litter box in the den, though. That's like the man lounge, drinking, smoking, whatever Sean deemed den worthy area. You can't have a poop a poop palace in the den. So now the den is just an acceptable shit box. <laughs> when was the last time you had people over? Me? <laughs> no, he's he's been like this for a long time. This I is don't not a. This is not a this is not a COVID thing. Like <laughs> people, you know what? Today someone came to the door. They knocked, and I just looked at the window and didn't didn't get up to see who it was. You're on my ring, fuckwad. <laughs> <laughs> Put the pizza on the stairs. I you can't order pizza in my neighborhood. I gotta go to the neighborhood over. You have to try to negotiate. Like, well, look, I'll meet you at the gas station four blocks away. And I'll give you a twenty dollar tip, and then you think about it. You're like, well, if I'm going that way, I might as well just go pick it up. You remember when uh, uh, after nine eleven, they wouldn't let people pick you up outside of the, uh, and, and we had to like the only thing they allowed were cabs, and you and I had to, this was like this was like a week after. 9/11. Yeah, we went out on the first tour together, like right after. Yeah, as soon as as soon as they allowed flights again, me and you were on a flight on an yeah. airline called fucking Spirit. And I'll never forget how weird it is for you to name your airline after like a ghost. <laughs> anyway, the shit still had ashtrays. I remember I remember pointing at the fucking thing and going, hey, there's a crack in the wall. And I could hear air coming through the crack. You know, I, I'm sure it wasn't oh, outside air. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was from the AC. It had to have been right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Open again. What could it be? The airplane you guys flew on. <laughs> the wings. I bet he does have the wings. <laughs> Maybe he's got a fireplace in that. Is this sure that's not a den? That's no. a fireplace. He's, right? the, he's, so, he's talking about the den because he's in the den. I think that's a TV fireplace. Is that a real fire? Oh, no. Fire. Oh, when we were doing that shit. I forgot all about those. That's the thing that drops down from the ceiling and it's supposed to get supposed to give you oxygen. That's those are the demos that the stewardess is running the plane, do the demonstration when you're when you're getting when there's taking off, and Sean would talk them out of those. Like no matter what I said, I'm lucky to get a bag of pretzels and a kick in the seat. Now, can I have one of those masks? What What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. Can, okay, hold on. Basically, I would leave the plane right before Sean. He's talking to him behind me, and every time we get downstairs, he'd be like, "Look," and he'd hold him up. Like every time, they'd reach up above there and be like, "Here you go." And I'm walking up Charlie Brown kicking a rock. What'd you get? I got a mask from an airplane. What'd you get, Brad? I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. Oh, yeah, those are the best. How many of those do you have? Do you have a bunch of them? I only have one of these, and Brad got me this. I've always wanted to see them blow up if you pull Like, do they work if you actually They pull? work. This they thing work. is like 20 fucking years old, so I don't know if it's going to work. What? Hey, man, hold on. Before you do that, seriously. I took one of those one time and, my, and Willie Maggot pulled one and a little beacon went off and it's like a GPS beacon. So make sure you read that before you pull that. <laughs> we had to stab him out of it and then go dump it in the river because there was a tracking device in it. <laughs> just careful. I just thought about that. Like you might pull that and that little light might start boinging 
And we're like, what is that? We took across street brewers like, oh, it's a GPS. They'd take it down to Mill Creek and dump it. That still fits you, man. That was good. What was your favorite food to eat on the road? Oh, <laughs> man. The chippy bun. Chippy bun. What is it? Chips on a bun, man. I was on, I was doing the Atkins diet, so I would order like 10 double cheeseburgers from Burger King. They would pass back a big box full of meat. Sean would take all those buns and put potato chips in them, and then he would make chippy buns. He would, that was like a meal. Listen, man, it was a rough time, you know? Chippy bun club. It was delicious. Yeah, in my late 20s, doing nothing but just, just can you just fucking put some carbs right in my arm like basically <laughs> I, I was i was living off of carbs i was i was addicted to, to any kind of fucking carbs like what is it i'm always sniffing grains like what do you got i just like meat pancakes that's what it looked like the stack meat of pancakes. meat pancakes that and loaves of cheese you used to make a meat cake you guys made the meat cake i actually bit into that shit in minneapolis it was my birthday i don't know what you guys put in that thing meat it was all yeah, man it was, was all meat Meat candles. It was pretty, pretty questionable meat. It was amazing that you were able to survive off of eating nothing but meat and cheese for mayonnaise like, for like five <laughs> years. I never saw a dibs eat a vegetable on tour, man. Nope. Not once. I don't think I ever did. I would eat a like after shows. I would watch Training Day, a big large pizza with extra extra cheese and a diet two liter, and I would only eat the cheese off of the pizza. And you would leave the fucking dough. <laughs> yeah. Are you still are you still juicing, Brad? Yeah, I'm getting a new juicer this week. The other one just bit the dust the other day. I could tell, uh, man. Your skin glows. Your liver's all good, huh? Yeah. What do you it's like great. better, the Atkins diet or the juicing? <laughs> the juicing. You never feel bad after you, uh, well, when you're doing it for four years that you feel the same all the time. When you do the juice thing, you feel good when you're doing it like that. You start that hit your liver is all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was on the transplant list for like two years. And then I had to tell them like, Hey, man, I took care of that. And they're like, there's no way you took care of it. And I get the other doctor who knew what I did to send them the paperwork to that hospital and be, and they're like, so he healed it with juice yeah <laughs> that's how they act too like yeah well because they're not going to make any money off of that they want you to get the liver they want you to, i never took any of the medicine never took any of the pills nothing i just started juicing like immediately after i started juicing oh shit when i went back to drinking i was juicing then when you died the second time yeah i didn't actually die from drinking that time i fell down that story is fucking crazy man falling down the steps, splitting my head open. I broke my shoulder, my arm, my ribs, my leg. Was that, were you, was that atmosphere touring? No. Oh. No. But Sean was there. That was at the, uh, the thing in the, in the bus. Oh, remember? That thing underground. Uh, 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 Ubon. Ubon. Yeah, Ubon. Yeah, yeah, Ubon. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. And I still went and played that. That was fine. The thing was, once the music started, I wasn't in any pain the entire time I was playing. Everything was fine, but then as soon as it stopped, it was right back to wanting to die. The weekend passed. It was like a Saturday, so Sunday passed. Monday morning, I drank that beer back there on top of that. Is that the last one? That's oh. the last one back there, yeah. What was it? Was it? Ice House Edge. It's horrible, but it's, it was 8%, so I kept that one. It was the very last one, and then went to the hospital. You can't expect much sympathy when you did it to yourself, but... The whole time I was in there, I wasn't worried about anything but my liver. I'm like, my liver okay? And the dude's like, your liver's fucking fine. So the juicing had kept my liver intact. I just split my fucking head open, and I hadn't basically hadn't eaten any food food for three months. I had only juiced and then drank all day. So juice to start the day, then drink the rest of the day, then juice in the morning, drink the rest of the day, and repeat, repeat, repeat. So my liver stayed fine, but splitting your head open and all so i was mal extremely malnourished and obviously i split my head open so i killed a whole big part of my brain when i fell down the steps and then my brain rewired around the damage and then uh circuit bending fixed the rest of that more or less when i got out of the hospital when i was like back to where i could walk and everything kind of walk i went downstairs to scratch and i couldn't do it my brain knew what to do, but my hands wouldn't make the motion. Like it wouldn't move on the record. The fader wouldn't move, but I knew what to do. Like I would try and it wouldn't work. And then um, my wife, just, Laura said, um, 
why don't you mess around with that circuit shit that you're always looking at on YouTube? So she went to the store and got some toys, and that's how I started doing it. Because those circuits are all small, you had to concentrate on it, you know what I mean? And that was just to, like, build back up basic motor skill type stuff. And then it kind of went from there. There's some other factors <laughs> involved in it, but... Who would hit it the hardest, like just out on the road would you, when you guys would be out on the road that are always kind of, was it Brad always or not? I didn't drink the first, the first X amount of years on the road. Even when Brad drank, he was, he still was able, he still had his faculties about him. You know, if anything, you had to talk him off the edge. If he, if, 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 if there was a, if there was a chance of violence occurring, you know, you had to, you had to, you had to talk him off the edge. But other than that, he didn't really necessarily need a lot of babysitting. But to be fair, Jaybird is such a good babysitter yeah. <laughs> that he would not only babysit you, but he'd make sure nobody knew that you needed the babysitter. You know, so, so maybe Brad did get babysitting that I didn't necessarily see. Then again, if I was like really shit can drunk, I wouldn't have remembered Bird babysitting me. But I remember Bird babysitting plenty of people. I don't know. I would go pretty hard. I wasn't a lightweight, but I wasn't a heavyweight. I was just uh, unhealthy. I just wasn't eating correctly. I, w- I wasn't doing some of the other things that you should be doing if you're going to drink every night. You know what right. I'm saying? And so, uh, and so it was pretty rough for me. You know, it was, it was definitely a rough one. It, it took some growing for me to like kind of figure out what's what. And to even now, even now in hindsight, when I look at it, it took some time for me to not resent that time in my life i don't anymore but i went through a phase of just looking back on all that and being like shaming myself you know what i'm saying going to going through all that because that just hitting the pendulum that hard on from the other direction during performances and everything that was one of my problems man was that i was able to drink 12 fucking beers and then go on stage with brad and i was able to like fucking whiz my way through my songs without any challenge you know what i'm saying and so i was wasted I was taking shit for granted. I was fucking, I was partying. I was, I was, I was focused on a lot of the wrong parts of what was around me. Was it more celebratory or did, were you shy on initially shy on stage sort of like to hide that or was it a both? Drinking then and partying, I would say was the equivalent of what shopping for records is now. It's a way for you to distract yourself from the parts of touring that are hard on you mentally you find this distraction and then you you zero in on it you become a nerd about it so i became a nerd about drinking and partying if that makes any sense you know it's like you know i've had that explained to me a few times i've gone through a few phases since those days where i've I've, i'm like oh buying books was my thing for a while or buying this it's like collecting something replaced collecting scars what do you aside from vinyl what 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 other kind of collections do you have I've got some action figures. I've got some comic books. I've got I've got the largest. Um, I mean, I, you're not gonna meet in person another human being that has as much of the uh, Nicolas Cage filmography as I have. You're a big Nick Cage fan, definitely, and that's fairly new. Like I jumped into the Nick Cage thing just a few years ago and was able to like because every all these DVDs are fucking a dollar ninety nine now, you know. So I made my list. I, I got some help. I checked it twice. And now when I hit your town, I find the fucking used DVD store. To- Nick Cage again. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Like the, used to do the interviews with his bushy chest out in the cage. N- that, yeah, Nicholas. <laughs> I have to admit I'm shocked by that, but what? I think it's awesome. I just never thought of that as a thing. What's the Maybe. best Nick Cage film? Aside from Raising Arizona, that's one I like of him. I mean, there's not a best. Again, there's a there's a list, and the list probably revolves, evolves. Uh, but currently, I would say, you know, Mandy ranked pretty fucking high for me. That which one? Mandy. Pretty amazing film. I mean, Nick does what Nick does, which is fucking phenomenal. But the film itself has got fucking sex and drugs and bikers and zombie bikers and it's got a chainsaw fight that it might just be the best chainsaw fight ever recorded to film it's a it's a, it's basically at its core it's a revenge flick you know and at the end it's all it's about resolve it's about finding resolve with your fucking issues and anybody i think can can relate to that doesn't he own like a fucking tyrannosaurus head or some shit Spent like 10 million dollars on like dinosaur that that was his his collecting thing is i need a piece of the moon a dinosaur cock and a, a petrified ostrich fart. I'm Nicholas Cage. 
me and Ant are in a movie with his son. I didn't get to meet him. Uh, we were we were there filming at different times and I haven't seen the movie yet. So for all I know, they could have cut me and Ant's part out. But I was I was told that our parts are, are still going to be in there. It's the missing part of the Hunter S. Thompson story. It's when he ran for mayor. Me and Ant play a couple of fucking hippie poll watchers at the at the voting booth. Oh, look at that one's dope as fuck. That's that's Hunter S. Thompson right there with the puzzle face. That is fucking dope. That's awesome. Fear and Loathing in Aspen is the name. The true story of Hunter S. Thompson's curious, bizarre, and entertaining run to be sheriff of Pitkin County. So sheriff, I got that wrong. It wasn't mayor. Sheriff. I'm gonna I'm gonna IMDB myself. I don't tend to. There's a movie on IMDb that's got me and Dibs in it and Merce. Punk Rock Holocaust. Punk Rock Holocaust. Yeah. Film on the Warp Tour. It's fucking classic cinema, man. Classic fucking cinema. It's trauma films. We both got killed. Do you have collection? What What are you collecting? Me? Yeah. Toys, records, and uh, basically the only thing I ever really collected was uh, serial killer stuff, art, and items like that. So... Do you have original uh, Manson drawings? I have the original Pogo the Clown painting from Gacy. Sean was there when I bought it. Yep. Um, I have that. I have a big, giant, impossible Richard Speck one that no matter which way you turn it, turns into a different painting. It's about four feet by five feet tall. No matter which way you hang it, it's a different painting. I have a couple Manson sock puppets and letters, Dahmer's doorknob. Dahmer letters. Uh, they all think they can draw. And I kind of accumulated all that when I was on tour with Sean, basically. Once you get one on the wall in my living room, too bad I don't have a den. I can put them <laughs> <laughs> Once you kind of get one of those paintings and people realize that you're buying them, they kind of come out of the woodwork to, uh, there's no big secret on how you get them. You just, you once you're plugged in, everything's available. Basically, it's there for when I die. My wife can sell it and make a bunch of money off of them because nobody else has them but me. It's my parting gift. Here, figure out how to sell these murderers' paintings. It'll be <laughs> awesome. Should be at no problem. There's a lot of but, records for her to sell, too. You know she's going to hit that first. She's going to pick out all the metal ones she wants and all the rap ones she secretly likes, and then everything else, it's a dollar. You nailed it, though. It's, it's there so that once you die, somebody else can make some money off it. That's what it's for. That's exactly what it's for. I think Sean's got better collections. I've I've been in his well at that one spot, you had a lot of stuff to look at. Books, toys, weird figures, records. I bought a fucking sheepdog off of Etsy. I was like, and I don't mean a dog, I mean the sheepskin coat, right? When I was a kid, I always wanted one, right? Yes. Never could have one. Finally, about a year and a half ago, I'm fucking sitting there and I was like, Man, you know what? I could finally get a sheepskin now. How much was a sheepskin? Watch this. So okay. I'm like, okay, where do they got them? When I was a kid, they had them at the Burlington Coat Factory. Okay, yes. we got a Burlington Coat Factory here. It's right by the Micro Center. I know where that is. I go over there. Yo, Burlington Coat Factory is not what it used to be when we were kids. Now it's kind of like the place where like products go to die. And you go in there and it's like, look at this fucking Adidas bag for $2. And it's like a brand new Adidas bag, but it's the dumbest grossest adidas bag ever but it's two bucks i'm gonna buy a fucking adidas bag for two bucks right no problem uh what is this it's a pack of five toy cars they're not made by matchbox or hot wheels or any name brand but they're fucking cars and it's 99 cents i'll take those you know you fill your cart up with just random dumb shit that's just spread out everywhere it's like going to a fucking somebody's garage sale at the end of the garage sale after it's all been fucking strewn out everywhere. And you're just like, Oh, everybody's already tried everything on and they didn't have any sheepskins. Right. So then I'm like, well, where do I do? So I go to Google where, where can I buy a sheepskin fucking Etsy? I found somebody in Kyrgyzstan that makes them with her fucking hands. And she's like, and I'm like, you know what? I want yours. I want this. And she's like, okay, send me your sizes. What's your chest size and all this? And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I go get a fucking tape measure and measure my chest. I send it to her. She hits me back and she's like, unless you're a bear, that's not your size. And I'm like, well, I measured my chest. I, I don't know what to say. You know, that's too, you're, you're going to be too big, whatever. I'm like, okay. So I asked my wife, help me measure my chest. I, I hit her back. I'm like, I think this is my chest size. She makes me the fucking coat and sends it to me. And it's like, I feel like fucking game of thrones one of the fucking giants like the coat is just massive big it's too big so i take it to somebody here and they fucking line it up for me and make it fit me so now i have one but all in all it it it, it, it costs like 
couple hundred bucks to get her to make it by hand. And then I had to spend like another hundred to get somebody to like fix it. But now, dog, I got the flyest fucking sheepskin jacket on this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> I need a sheepskin jacket now. A sheepskin coat measured in inches, not uh, not centimeters. <laughs> oh, do you have a sheepskin jacket? Do I? But yes, I got two of them. What? Hey! <laughs> no, I don't. Oh. I always wanted. I always wanted sheep. I always wanted something. Me too. Bro, she sheared the fucking sheep. It's brown. It's not the tan, like how everybody had the tan that matched the Timbos. It, this is like a darker brown one, and it's hey Ray fantastic no i'm not having a stroke i want a sheepskin coat they're down here talking about that shit sean has a sheepskin coat you do not hold on <laughs> you're going to get it i want to see it <laughs> no i want a sheepskin coat i don't want your black fur coat i can't wear your black fur coat <laughs> This regal looking motherfucker, look at him. You look fucking fucktaculous. <laughs> that is fucking incredible. It's That's warm amazing. as fuck. Man, are you looking at that shit? <laughs> See what you've done now. See what I have? I'm fucked. <laughs> Kurzakstan. It's like the most hip hop thing of all time. Slash, he could be a pimp in that coat <laughs> or a murderer. I, I put I put some gold fronts in. I bought some fronts that fit me because that was another thing that I never fucking had. That I was like, fuck. How many times have we had the conversation about the teeth, Ray? I put them in with the coat and some gazelles and shot a video last winter. Park, you give me a condition of the heart. Let's pretend we're married just to rip it all apart. It's a love bizarre. Like, do me, baby, like you never done before. Who's that lady? And he had gazelles, too. I could never have gazelles. Gold teeth or the sheepskin. <laughs> In the coat, you shot a video with the with the your sheepskin coat. Yeah, yeah, that was my excuse for buying it. I fucking put it on the video budget. <laughs> yeah, I could have been in the video, but I didn't have sheepskin coat. I had the fuck. I I, I used my advance. <laughs> I don't get a fucking advance. <laughs> advance. Ah, this is fucking indie rap, fool. All right, so I uh, I but I used the video budget to get. Some gold fronts and a sheepskin coat. How warm is that coat? It's pretty warm right now. I mean, I got a fire going on in the back, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, back to that. That's a real fire. That's a TV screen fire. <laughs> it's a real fire. That's a fire. Why do you have a fireplace in the, the den to keep the dog from shitting there? Dog won't shit by the fire. Oh, it is lower than it was. That's a fire. Oh, it's a it's a gas fireplace, it's though? A, it's gas. Yeah. There, that's, that's what it is. Wait, what did you just do with that button? This is a remote for the fire. Oh, it's gas. It, it lifted up your screen. No, he moved the camera down. Oh, no, no, no. This is just one of those Ikea desks that goes up and down. So oh, my man. laptop is on that, but I raised it up. Oh, so mine I could, too. So I could... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm getting a sheepskin coat for my birthday. There you go. You don't say I can hear you. She said, no, you're not, and close the door. Don't. Uh, <laughs> spoiler. Trust me. Trust me. See, there it is. Yes. Man, that sheepskin looks awesome. It's warm. I'm I'm uh I'm starting to like drown. Which is worse, old cigarette smell or old weed smell? I would never let nobody smoke in here. Cigarettes, that is. But weed is different. It just doesn't have it doesn't have the same stink. You know what I'm saying? Weed doesn't stink like cigarettes. Cigarettes smell and the weed sp smells like a burning foot. I, I don't, I don't, I, I disagree. Cigarette smell lingers for a lot longer than the weed smell. Like, I smell nothing right now. I smell weed from months ago upstairs in some cubby that some, some vagabond smoked some weed and thought he was getting away with it. Why can't they just smoke in the den? Oh, I didn't get a den, damn it. Oh, there's a burning foot on the <laughs> fucking painting now. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my God. That's great. Little baby got kicked off the pony corn. The vulture is thinking about getting the baby to go with his burning foot, his piss cup. Why did you cut the, the pony corn in half? Are you trying to figure out how old it is? Uh, <laughs> looks like you cut it open to count the rings. 
Like, oh, this pony corn is nine. In pony corn years, nine is like 50 something. Like, because it's like fucking 6.2 per year, or some dumb shit like that. And they do basically spit acid. <laughs> I told you, it's right there on the Googles, Wikipedia Googles. Everybody knows pony corns are pretty common in Cincinnati. I think this is where they originate. You know, the funny thing is, now that you've added the red cup, the, the passenger side rear foot looks like it's doing some kind of two-step dance instead of before. Without the red cup, it just was like standing there. Now that there's a red cup in the picture, suddenly the fucking thing is dancing. Like, how does that even happen to my eyes? How did you put this in my brain? This, isn't, this scares me. Maybe he's doing a two-step. He's crossing yeah. over there. He's, doing the, he's crossing over there. Yeah. You're taking that... Uh... Baby burning foot is heating up the can there, and then then we got like a hot dog in the can. We're making hot dogs, Sean, in the edge can. Oh, of course. There's a little water in the bottom, a little beer in the bottom. It's cooking it up. It's like beer steamed hot dog. A little Marsha Griffith on the hi-fi. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're right. Let's see. (laughs) <laughs> hey brad who would you like who what band would you love to see live that you never got a chance dead or alive otis redding there i don't have a band i'd like to see otis redding live how about you sean fat boys you ever saw fat boys no nah. i don't think i did either do you, do you guys still go to live shows the last concert I went to his FKA Twigs. I went and saw her about a week before our, my own last tour. It's hard to get me out the house for a live show because not because of the show. I love shows, but the less time I have to spend inside of clubs and venues when I'm not working. Yeah. The better, you know, it could be weird, especially here in town. If I go see a show, there's always the chance that I'm going to end up seated next to or standing next to somebody that um, is familiar with who I am. And that could go either direction. That could be like they're a fan or it could be somebody who is whatever the opposite of a fan is. And it can get get kind of awkward. I'm just trying to hang out with my wife and watch a show. And you're trying to pick a fight or you're trying to pick my nose. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, but I, I do love live music. Obviously what I like is when I'm on tour, I like watching the openers every night just to continue to like absorb and see what they're doing that works or doesn't work. Just like I do if I go see a band, I watch that. What are, what are they doing that works, doesn't work? Uh, but now it's weird. It's like, it's almost like I, I watch live shows like I'm watching stand-up. I'm watching it to see like, oh, did you kill tonight? What what, what worked? What, what didn't work? What was, you know? And what did you do when it didn't work? Did you quickly, one, two, three, four, hit the next song? You know, did you talk some shit? But now you guys kind of have like a friendship bracelet. When I tear it in half, you guys can. (laughs) Wow. I love it. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Hey, be careful with that, man. You're going to rip it. I know. I'm going to. Scott, I got to. Well, listen. It is your guys' piece. Do you want want a straight razor cut or a rip? I like the idea of the actual rip. There you go. Look now. When, now, whenever you guys get to see each other in person, you can hold your <laughs> drawings together. Just make sure we bring those halves with us, and then we yeah. like Wonder Twins activate. Yeah. Make me into a bucket of ice. <laughs> Thank you guys for for sitting with me. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, and you have a very high threshold for bullshit, and I appreciate that. I really enjoyed the conversation. I, uh, I, I'm going to edit, edit it down. You got a, uh, on a side note, you got four hours of editing to do. I know, <laughs> but I'm wow. used to it. Sorry. No, my- <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yes. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thanks again. That was fucking fun. I, 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 I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Thanks for looking at us. <laughs> Thanks for looking at us. <laughs> Cheers, you guys. So that was it. Um, First off, I want to thank Brad and Sean for joining me. It was a shitload of fun. Be sure to check out all of Atmosphere's music. They have a huge collection of on-point joints and peep the Rhymesayers label. They've always got a huge, awesome 
satisfying lineup of artists. Most definitely seek out Mr. Dibs and any of the things that he's offering. Uh, you can check him out on his website or probably on his Instagram at Mr. Fucking Dibs. Uh, go there to learn more about his circuit bent toys. He sells those, so you can purchase them directly from him. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was honestly a four and a half hour discussion. Uh, the timer did go off at 45 minutes and we agreed to add an additional 15 minutes to the timer. But then when that timer went off, I was pretty close to the drawing being done. Although I would have been okay at that point to stop, I most definitely didn't want to. So I was super stoked that they were down to keep chatting. It felt like we were enjoying ourselves. So we just continued on with the banter. I was drawing throughout the whole four and a half hour period which is why I had to use the sped up version of the drawing. I hope that wasn't too much of a distraction for you but I think that it worked out okay. There was a lot of good stuff that I had to cut out for the purpose of time. I really wanted to try to keep this episode under two hours. I thought that it was kind of going to make some sense for it to be called DOD 145. Two people, two drawings, 45 minutes each. I know 45 and 45 doesn't equal 145, but for wordplay sake, 145 sounds better. I do have a lot of extra footage of discussion and stuff that maybe one day I'll later release as mini nuggets. As this series progresses, I think I will do that. Uh, it does take me a lot of work to put these things together, but I'm having a blast right now, so I will keep going. But it would definitely help if you could take the time to just leave some comments or some likes or even, uh, you know, sharing with your friends. That makes a big difference. Also, just let me know that you're enjoying yourselves. I really enjoyed this two-person format. There was a lot of fun, and it was definitely helpful that they had a strong rapport with each other. But even with their comfortability with each other, truthfully, it still took us a about 45 minutes to get comfortable with each other as a whole. This DOD 45 format, it takes a second to get used to. And with two people, the process of filling it out, I think just took a little bit longer than normal. There was a little more silliness involved. You know, that's that's a thing that I find I do when I'm in uncomfortable or unfamiliar situations. I tend to joke around a little bit more. Uh, that was happening a lot at the beginning of this. It's just a defense mechanism that I think probably a lot of people subconsciously use. But we did reach a point where we were down to just shoot the shit and I'm glad that we did. I think you can feel it as the um, episode turned on, but that is why the episode's a little longer than usual. I had to figure out the structure of how to lay out the conversation. Um, it's chopped up a little bit more than I would like, uh, yada, yada, yada. I think the pacing was fine and I hope that you enjoyed it. The important part is I thank Sean and Mr. Fucking Dibs, Brad. It was really awesome of them to join me. I came out of the whole thing with a genuine fondness for both those guys. Hopefully my show and the experience left an impression on them. Additionally, I hope that you as the audience had as much fun as I did. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. And uh, the next episode I have on Cast One from Strange Famous Records. Go check out his music. He's a fantastic rapper. And he and I laughed a lot in our discussion, or at least I did, some at his expense. Uh, he tells this funny ass story about Freddy Krueger when he was a kid that it's darkly amusing. <laughs> that episode will be out very soon. Also, if you haven't yet, go back and watch the Chesky interview, the Sage Francis interview, and even the pilot episode with my friend Quentin. We talk a lot of music on that episode. It's an informative episode. You'll see the growth from the pilot episode to this episode and I'll just keep growing and the episodes will keep getting better and better. So thanks for joining me. Make sure you again hit that subscribe button and go to artbytie.com for any upcoming information about the DOD 45 podcast and any information regarding my artwork or my upcoming schedule. Things are opening up. I'm getting out on the road again. Thank you for watching this episode and please leave some comments in the comment section. If there's people you would like to see me interview, I'd be happy to reach out to them and uh, let me know if you're liking the show if you have something negative to say feel free to keep that shit to yourself i don't care to hear about it if you do have something that you think will benefit the show feel free to reach out that's it for now i'm ty check out my work at artbyty.com or via instagram and facebook at artbyty and damn it i'm trying to step up my twitter game so go follow me at twitter at artbyty that's it peace Bad thoughts in my head that take place in my bed and I don't have to lie Thanks for watching this episode of DOD 45. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to ever miss an episode. Also stick around my YouTube page for a bit. There's a whole array of videos to enjoy, including time-lapse videos, drawing tutorials, and live streams. It's like an amusement park. Now click that subscribe button and go watch another episode of DOD 45. Cheers. <laughs>